So what we're looking at in this lecture is the properties of stars, what distinguish one star from another star. Now we've studied the sun pretty much in detail. So when we study other stars, we're going to use our sun as a reference point to compare other stars to. Okay? Our sun will be the basis of comparison. So we would like to know what is the mass of other stars as compared to the mass of our own sun. What we notice is that there's a general trend. Other stars can be sometimes lighter than the sun. About the lightest that they can be is about 8% of the sun's mass, 0.08 times the sun's mass. So they could be about 8% the sun's mass, or they could be about 50 times the sun ma sun's mass. You could have exceptions to that rule. You could have a star maybe 60, 70, 80 times, but those are very rare. Generally, about 50 is the, uh, the heaviest. So I'm using here mass of sun is 1. Stars more massive than 50 times the mass of the sun have too much mass ever to come to hydrostatic equilibrium. So you might ask yourself, why is there an upper limit? Why is there a maximum to how heavy a star can be? Well, if the star is too heavy, it has too much gravity, and it's just going to collapse itself, and it's not going to form a, a, a hydrostatic equilibrium. It's not going to form a stable star. So you can't have it being too heavy. They collapse under their own weight. Okay, what's the reason why stars have the least mass? Why can't they just have any l as low mass as possible? Well, here's the issue. If they have less than 8% of the sun's mass, which is this one, 0.08, which is equivalent to saying 80 times the mass of Jupiter. 80 times the mass of Jupiter is equivalent to 8% of the sun's mass. Okay? If a star has less mass than that, then it cannot get hot enough in its core to generate their own energy. Okay? By the way, what was the process of creating energy that our sun used? And I gave the analogy of the, the little kid, so you shouldn't forget it now. The yeah, the PP chain, right? You'll never forget that, the PP chain. The proton-proton chain, otherwise known as hydrogen fusion, right? If a star is too light, its core cannot get hot enough to do hydrogen fusion. That's what this is saying. So it's got to have enough mass in order to be hot enough. However, objects less massive than 8% of the sun and more massive than 13 times Jupiter, so there's kind of like a, there's a limbo category here. They're in limbo. They're bigger than Jupiter by about 13 times more massive than Jupiter, but they're not full-on stars. They're not 80 times the mass of Jupiter. They're, they are in limbo. They're neither a full-on star, they're neither a planet. They can create energy other, using other processes. These things are known as brown dwarfs. Brown dwarf is like, if I ask you what it is, it's neither a star nor a planet. It's in between. It's between a star and a planet. That's what a brown dwarf is. Why do we call it brown? Because its color is going to be red, deep red, dark red. Okay? And when we visually look at it, its color is going to be kind of like brown, okay? What is their temperatures? Their temperature is 1,000 to 2,500 Kelvin. So they are hotter than Venus, but colder than the sun. Hotter than Venus, but quite colder than the sun, much colder. You see that? So what are they? In between. Okay, what is the temperature of stars? The coldest star that is a full-fledged star is 2,500 Kelvin. Notice that the brown dwarf ends at 2,500 Kelvin. That's the hottest brown dwarf. And the coldest star begins where the brown dwarf ends. So this is the coldest star. And about the hottest star is 50,000 Kelvin. This is at its surface. Okay? 50,000 Kelvin at its surface, that's a very, very hot star. Okay? So... The temperature of the sun is 5,800 Kelvin, okay, 5,800 Kelvin. So roughly speaking, we would say kind of like this, just to approximate. Mm. Let's see here.
let's just, for the sake of s simplicity, let's approximate the temperature of the sun as 5,000 Kelvin. If the coldest star is 2,500 Kelvin, coldest star, um, that would make its temperature how much compared to the sun's temperature? What's the ratio? If the coldest star is 2,500, if you divide 2,500 by 5,000, you get about a half, right? So it's about half the temperature of the sun. So about the coldest star that, is, that exists out there is about cooler than the sun by about a half, okay? The hottest star, roughly, is how, much time, how many times? If the hottest star is 50,000 Kelvin, and you approximate the sun's temperature at 5,000, that would be how many times? 10 times hotter, right? 10 times 5,000, 50,000. 10 times the temperature of the sun. What color will this coldest star appear? Remember the visible spectrum, Roy G. Biv? Remember we mentioned earlier cold stars appear more red. Hot stars appear more violet. Right? So the cold stars, which are half the temperature of the sun, they're going to be uh, red. These are going to be called red dwarf stars. Red dwarf, not brown dwarf. You see? They're hotter than brown dwarfs. See, red dwarf. Where would brown dwarf be on this scale? They would be on the left. They, okay, they're even colder than the red dwarf. So brown dwarf. You see? They, brown dwarfs emit mainly infrared. They emit mainly infrared, but they do emit some red, and that's what helps us to see it as brown, you see. But red dwarfs emit mainly red. What does our sun emit? Well, our sun is in between this range, so our sun emits a yellow-green kind of like that. Sun is in the middle, and that's why it appears the color that it does, right? And then these hot stars... 30,000 Kelvin, 40,000 Kelvin, 50,000 Kelvin, these ones will all look like blue-violet colors, okay? So they will look violet, the, the hot ones. These, are, these would be called uh, hot blue giants. Hot blue giants. And then when they start dying, they will start growing, they will become yellow supergiants, red supergiants, and we'll talk about the evolution of stars next week, what happens to stars when they die. It gets fun, okay? <laughs> okay, the radius of stars. R means radius. The other way to say it is size, the size of stars. The radius of stars can be larger than 1,000th the radius of the sun, or it could be up to 1,000 times the radius of the sun. So what does that mean? So if this is the sun, the smallest stars is 1,000th the size of the sun. That means I can't even show you. It's so small. It's like this. That would be about a neutron star. Neutron star. That's the smallest star, okay? Then there's something known as a white dwarf star in between. White dwarf. Then there's red dwarfs. Neutron star is the smallest. Then white dwarfs. Then red dwarfs. Then sun. Then it starts coming the other stars. Then starts coming the stars that are dying. Uh, blue giants, red giants, super giants. And then there are some that I can't even draw on the board, so, so huge. So the sun is in kind of in the middle between them, not too big, not too small. It's not the heaviest, it's not the lightest, it's not the hottest, it's not the coldest, okay? So the sun is kind of in between, okay? Between everything, you know? <laughs>